Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we'll be looking into parallel support vector machine at a glance. In the previous videos of Big Data Analytics playlist, I have explained you what exactly support vector machine is. We have seen hard margin SVM as well as we have seen soft margin SVM. I hope you have seen both the videos. If not, then please check out those videos first in the Big Data Analytics playlist. While I was talking about support vector machines, we also have seen the problems behind this algorithm. No doubt this algorithm gives the best results, but there are certain problems. And it is that it is computationally demanding. In the previous video, we have seen support vector machine algorithm has to perform huge amount of calculations even for smaller data sets, even if it has less number of classes. It's not about just finding the hyperplane, it's about finding the best hyperplane with the maximum margin distance between both the support vector gutters. As we know that the computational complexity of solving any quadratic programming problem increases in a cubic manner, as and when the number of training vectors in the dataset increases. Which means, with the increase in the dataset, the complexity of calculations increases in a cubic manner. You can just imagine how complex it would be if it has increased with the power of 3. When it comes to larger datasets, for performing multiple complex calculations, we require huge amount of computational resources and those computational resources are very much expensive. It is not at all an optimal way of using such ideology for larger amount of data. Which is why there was a need to find out such methodology which will not take huge amount of computational resources to calculate the complex calculations. At the same time, it will be applicable for huge amount of data. And that is why this parallel support vector machine was introduced. Now it uses sequential minimal optimization technique which reduces the chunk size to enhance the efficiency. Which means, instead of applying support vector machine algorithm, directly on the entire big data, we, we can use this sequential minimal optimization method with which the entire big data will be divided into small chunks. Now obviously, the data in each and every chunk will have similar distribution as of the original data set. Now what exactly happens when we reduce the entire big data size into small chunks? If you remember in support vector machines, I have explained you what exactly support vectors are. and the points which are not support vectors, that means those points which are not accounting for calculation of finding the optimal hyperplane are called as non-support vectors. Now, there is no need of huge amount of non-support vectors in the entire data. This non-support vectors not only increases the data size, it also increases the calculation part which slows down the process of getting the optimal hyperplane. But somehow if they are eliminated, then the efficiency will increase and because of this method of dividing the entire big data into chunks, non-support vectors are eliminated which increases the efficiency. For each and every chunk, the support vector machine algorithm will be applied. So I hope now it is clear that how this ideology of dividing the entire big data into chunks is helpful. Now this particular thing is achieved with the help of these two methods that is shrinking and caching. So what exactly shrinking means? Shrinking involves excluding non-bound vectors which means non-support vectors from the optimization process. As I have already told you that they do not contribute to the changes in the hyperplane. Now if these non-bound vectors are eliminated, the optimization process becomes more efficient. Now as we know the kernel function is a key component in SVM training as it computes the similarity between the data points in a higher dimensional feature space. But for larger datasets, the kernel function evaluation can be computationally expensive. And because of this, caching method is used. So basically caching involves storing the kernel function evaluation for previously processed data points such that they can be reused again instead of recomputing it from scratch. This will avoid redundant computations and it will reduce the overall computation time which is required during SVM training. And therefore, by implementing shrinking and caching techniques, the computation requirements for SVM training are significantly reduced, making it more efficient. Now when these divided chunks are 
combined again it involves the usage of the method digesting now digesting in svm optimization involves prioritizing the optimization of subsets basically the subsets will be optimized first before adding the new data to it that means while combining two svm chunk this digesting optimization will be applied which will improve the convergence as well as it will increase the training efficiency through all this method it guarantees the convergence of the model to a globally optimal solution it will give the most optimal accurate results and that too using very less computational resources so i hope you guys have now understood what exactly parallel support vector machine is as well as all these methods such as shrinking caching and digesting are clear to you all now we will see diagrammatically how parallel support vector machine computes the most optimal result even for big data so let's say we have a big data here this data is not only huge but it is very much complex and enormous now if we directly apply support vector machine to this particular data you cannot imagine how large amount of computational resources this particular data will require for calculating the optimal results so that is not the best thing which can be done with this particular data instead we can apply parallel support vector machine method for this particular big data and we can achieve the best results with less amount of computational resources so first thing that can be done is to divide this entire data into chunks now the division of the data cannot be done randomly we have to follow a particular distribution that the original data set follows once the chunks are ready to each and every chunk support vector machine will be applied the algorithm is going to be applied to every single chunk in every chunk the same process will be followed as we do normally on a data set for each chunk it will try to find out the support vectors and then with the help of that support vector gutters it will find out the most optimal hyperplane now the data in every chunk is different from every other chunk and that is why the results will be different in each chunk the shrinking technique will be applied which will exclude the non bound vectors that means the non support vectors and it will increase the efficiency of the optimization process this will be done for every single chunk now once everything is done properly the merging process will take place now here chunk 1 classifier and chunk 2 svm classifier are merged to a single classifier while this merging takes place again all the process will be repeated it will try to find out the best optimal hyperplane but now here we will be using the caching method which as you know it stores the kernel functions so all the important kernel functions which were actually calculated in the previous step will now be used in this particular classifier instead of recomputing every single thing from scratch so therefore even if it is again trying to find out the hyperplane it won't have to repeat all these steps hence the redundant computations are avoided and it also reduces the overall computation now similarly you can see in the next step the svm5 classifier and svm6 classifier are now merged to a final classifier which is svm7 this particular classifier svm7 will be acting as a classifier for the original data that means our model is now ready you can see the first layer involved all the chunks of the original data the second layer involves the classifier for that particular chunks the third layer and the fourth layer involves the merging of these classifiers so this is how the layers are framed and now you can see since our final model is ready we can use this final model classifier for testing purpose now we can use it directly to all the chunks which we have got in the first layer itself for each and every chunk this particular svm7 classifier can be used to test whether it is acting correctly or not or it can directly be used to the original big data so this is how the testing is done the final model classifier will be used again in the previous chunks for testing and this is how we can get whether the final model is perfectly converged or not so i hope 
that the entire diagrammatical representation of parallel support vector machine how it is used in big data sets to find out the optimal classifier is clear to you all i hope you have no doubts so now let's have a look at the advantages of parallel support vector machine first advantage is that it is scalable even if you try to add more data to it the process won't be affected and you will get the best results after adding more data to it also the next advantage is that it has faster training because it reduces the training time through parallel computation we have already seen the different methods which it uses to reduce the training time the next advantage of parallel svm is that it uses the resources efficiently it optimizes the utilization of multiple computing units and obviously that is possible with the help of the methods such as shrinking caching and digestion the next important advantage is that it is used for big data especially this algorithm is designed to deal in big data scenarios it is nowadays used in real world cases everywhere as you know it also provides the best results this is because of the improved convergence of the ideology which is used in this particular algorithm due to the process of parallel computation its convergence improves and the most highlighted advantage of this particular algorithm is that it is used in real time processing this algorithm is very much suitable for continuous data streams as and when the data streams enters it will be divided into chunks and those chunks will then be used for classification and then the process of merging will takes place so you can see how amazing is this parallel svm algorithm is i hope each and everything is clear to you all if you guys have any single doubt then post it in the comment section this is the first ever video available on the entire youtube on parallel svm so please like share and subscribe to my channel also hit the bell icon don't forget to follow me on instagram and also join me on telegram